They hate me and slander me and my country as they hate you and slander you and America you stand for. We all know how this works. Progressive liberals didn't want me to be here because they knew what I would tell you. Because I'm here to tell you that we should unite our forces. Because we Hungarians know, because we Hungarians know how to defeat the enemies of freedom on the political battlefield. We know what we have Ronald Reagan to thank for. Hungarian Prime Minister uh, and authoritarian, of course, Viktor Orban, speaking at CPAC Texas yesterday. Um, and did you hear that uh, the line at the beginning? We need to join our forces together to defeat. To defeat who? So as Republicans, Americans, as they call themselves, talk, uh, uh, agree, stand up, and applaud this authoritarian leader from another country, America first, anyone, uh, talking about joining forces to go against our enemies. Uh, what are their enemies? Uh, what type of things would they be uh, connecting about to force against their enemies? Orban has more to say because he has an issue with this horrible institution of marriage being thwarted by gay folks. That's part of the battle. Let's watch. Hungary shall protect the institution of marriage as the union of one man and one woman. <laughs> Family ties. Family ties shall be based on marriage or the relationship between parents and children. To sum up, the mother is a woman, the father is a man, and leave our kids alone. Full stop, end of discussion. This guy sounds like a cartoon character. Uh, anyways, uh, he's all about his Nazism and his hatred. So join forces against our enemies. Some of our enemies are the ones that are trying to destroy real marriage. That's part of their battle cry as well. Uh, but maybe they're missing the Nazism and the authoritarianism and all of the next aspects, which, okay, so gay folks, that's the first problem with marriage. Do you think maybe he'll go back further and talk about maybe interracial marriage and mixing of races. Uh, let's see if they have some applause for this as well. Let's look at some of the details of what he said. And what he described as quote, our world, Orban said people from within Europe mix with one another. <laughs> We're willing to mix with one another, but we do not want to become peoples of mixed race is what he said. Uh, migration has split Europe into two, or I could say that it has split the West in two. One half is a world where European and non-European peoples live together. These countries are no longer nations. They are nothing more than a conglomeration of peoples. More things I guess that they agree with him on. One of his closest associates resigned in protest over this whole thing. And she described his speech as pure Nazi. Pure Nazi from one of the people that worked with him for 20 years. Let's look at some details. In her resignation letter, published Tuesday by Hungarian media, longstanding advisor Zazuza Hegdes compared Orban's rhetoric to the language used in Nazi Germany. She says, I'm sincerely sorry that I have to end the relationship due to such a shameful position. She worked with Orban for 20 years, as I mentioned, and she says, I was left with no other choice. She told Orban that his comments were unacceptable even by the standards of the most bloodthirsty racist. I don't know how you didn't notice that you were presenting a pure Nazi text worthy of Goebbels. She said, of course, referring to Joseph Goebbels, Nazi propagandist under Adolf Hitler. As again, Republicans stand up, cheer, and applaud this guy and say, this is our man. Maybe he's been promoted by someone else that we're gonna talk about later in the show, uh, Tucker Carlson. But anyway, uh, CPAC's uh, whole thing, their, their, their anti-Semitism was on full display as well. I'm gonna let you get in after this one. I wanna make sure we get all of the hate as much as possible before we start talking about this further, yes. Let's watch what he had to say there. The globalists can all go to hell, I have come to Texas. Uh, <laughs> We must take back the institutions in Washington and in Brussels. We must find friends and allies in one another. We must coordinate the movement of our troops because we face the same challenge. You have midterm elections this year, then presidential and congressional elections in 24. And we will have election in the European Parliament same year. 
These two locations will define the two fronts in the battle being fought for Western civilization. The battle for Western civilization, again, recap, yes. Gay people is a, are a problem. Mixing of races is a problem. Uh, and Jewish folks are definitely a problem. And we should co uh, coordinate our troops to come together so that we can uh, move on them in the right way in this battle. It's like, <laughs> it doesn't get any more clear than that. Yeah, I mean, you said that he sounded like a cartoon, and there's a reason for that. It's actually kind of deliberate. You know, he sounds like a Nazi because he's using Nazi talking points, and he's using a lot of the same talking points that you know we see coming out of Russia, and the, the same things that we see coming out of the GOP. There's a reason why somebody like Viktor Orban has a place at CPAC here in Texas. It's so weird that like all these authoritarians love to come to Texas for some reason. <laughs> but I mean, Viktor Orban is one of these leaders who is functioning as an authoritarian within a country that has a democratic system. And you see this kind of happening all over the world in various different, you know, it presents itself in different ways where there's a country that has elections, but they're not necessarily free and fair. Cuz you always will see these unpopular rulers winning landslide victories. And Viktor Orban just got elected to his fifth term as prime minister in a landslide victory. And that was even when six different opposition parties came together in an effort to remove him from office. And all six of them collectively were unsuccessful in doing so. So obviously, there's potentially some foul play there. But Hungary is a part of NATO. And depending on who you ask, it is still technically a democratic country. These authoritarians still find ways to stay in power. Putin, for instance, he was able, he was sitting as president and he expanded the number of terms that he was allowed to serve, which seems like a conflict of interest. In China, they just got rid of their presidential term limits. And in Hungary, the prime minister, there is no term limit for him. So it's no surprise that you know the GOP is now looking to somebody like Orban, who is an authoritarian in a democracy, and they're kind of you know looking to model what they're doing off of what he's doing. Kind of all makes sense. When Donald Trump was in office, he was pining for the kinds of positions, or at least the kind of authoritarian power. Yeah, it came power. up a couple of times. Yeah, absolutely. That that even Kim Jong Un wanted, and he said, you know, this is the kind of thing I would like. And as we've seen in his attempt to do so, it failed because we held on by a thread. Yeah, and he's still pushing the same thing. It's almost like they wish they were just like that. It's very or it's not Almost like that, it completely yeah. is.